Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourselfers. So today as a follow-up video to my last video where I showed you how you can test and diagnose problems with your steering angle sensor using a multimeter or a scanner with live data, in the same methodical, and if I may say so myself, eloquent fashion, we're gonna go over how you can test problems with your lateral acceleration sensor or your yaw rate sensor as well. Now, just to do a recap, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on this 2001 Mercedes ML430. But what you'll learn in this video will greatly help you in diagnosing problems with these two sensors across many makes and models. Doesn't matter if it's on a Mercedes, a Ford, Toyota or a Honda, they all kind of work very similar to one another. All right, so on this Mercedes, we have a bunch of lights on on our dash. We have the lights on for ABS, brake assist, electronic stability program or control unit. And then when we scan those control units, we get this, as you can see, we have stored codes. Obviously there's one for steering angle sensor that we covered. The other one is for the control unit, the stability program or electronic stability control unit. And then we also have your, our yaw rate sensor and the lateral acceleration sensor as well. Now in my previous video, some of you mentioned since I have so many codes in the electronic stability control unit on this car, I should first save them, then erase them, and then go drive the car around and see which one comes back first and then go from there. That's an okay way to do it, but you know, if you have a scanner with live data going through these three sensors, the steering angle sensor, the yaw rate sensor, the lateral acceleration sensor, it takes all under five minutes. It's not that hard to do at all. Whereas if you were to erase these codes and go drive the car around, sometimes the code you want doesn't come back in a timely fashion. You know, you have to drive in a certain uh, driving condition. You have to, some of these codes, have, these sensors have to be recalibrated. You know, you have to go up to a certain speed, down a certain speed, go around turns, whatnot. So this is actually a much faster way than to erase these codes and go drive it around until one of the codes comes back. Now, if this was an engine performance issue where you had, you know, 10 or 15 codes in your engine control unit, then yeah, erasing those, all those codes, and then test driving, see which one comes back first. That'll probably make more sense, but you know, in this situation, you know, just simply learning how to look at the sensors and diagnosing them is a lot faster and more efficient. All right, so first let's go over the lateral acceleration sensor. All right, so the job of your lateral acceleration sensor is to provide a signal back to your ABS and or electronic stability program or control unit based on the lateral or side to side force that's being applied to your car as you're going around turn. So let's say you're gonna make a right turn. You make that right turn, you obviously experience body roll. Therefore, you know, there is lateral or side to side force being applied to your car. If you're making a left turn, you experience body roll the other way. Same thing, so your, your, the lateral sensor will sense that and send that as voltage, as a varying voltage on this car back to your uh, ABS or your stability program or control unit. And then your stability control unit will, along with the other sensors, will make sure you're not about to fishtail out of control or you're, not, you're losing control. And if you are, then it will activate your brakes and try to keep you safe. All right, so let's say you have a code for your lateral acceleration sensor and you have a scanner that can pull out live data from your electronic stability control unit. Life is easy if this is the case. So it's first, you obviously turn the key to the on position. So here's a list of all the different sensors that we can get live data on this car, which is pretty good. And we go to graphs, go to one graph, and then we're gonna go to this drop down menu, go lower, find our lateral acceleration sensor and click on that. As you can see, with the car sitting on level ground, we at, we're at positive 0.44. All right, now, generally speaking, you obviously want to be as close to zero as you can. Now we're at 0.44, or you know, it's changing between 0.40 to 0.44, which is not a whole lot, but that's fairly close to zero. I don't know if it's within spec or not. I cannot find any info in the service data regarding what the reading should be with the car on level ground in park. But regardless, next, we're, not, we're gonna have to generate some side-to-side uh, -side force and see whether the sensor can sense that. To do that, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is to grab the top of the car and rock it back and forth. That would create the side-to-side -side force applied to the car and then sensor should show it. It should swing to more positive. So from 0.44, it should go more. It should go higher, it should go one or one and a half, two, whatever. And then as it swings the other way, it should go lower than 0.44. So to zero, negative one, negative one and a half, et cetera. All right, so we're gonna set you guys up here. And then I'm gonna rock the car back and forth and you guys gonna tell me what you see. Here we go. You're gonna to have to do this for you know a few seconds 
because of the refresh rate on the screen and etc. So you get all the different numbers. You want to go negative and positive roughly around the same amount. All right, so I just reviewed the footage on my computer screen of the last shot and it looks like I was involved in more eloquent behavior, this time with a car in the background. Uh, but it was something I promised early on in the video, so promise fulfilled. But anyway, as you saw on the screen, again, we started at positive 0.4 or 0.44. And then as we swung this back and forth, we went all the way down to negative 1.6 something. And then the other way it went to positive 2.3. So that's roughly about two units of swing either to the positive side and then to the negative side. So, you know, not regarding, not, you know, notwithstanding our starting point at positive 0.44, this sensor, as far as we can tell right now, can sense the rotational force or side to side force that's being applied to this car. All right, so next let's talk about the yaw rate sensor. All right, so a lot of times you can't test the yaw rate sensor the same way you did the lateral acceleration sensor because, you know, when you rock the car back and forth, you're giving it lateral or side to side movement, but you, you know, the yaw rate sensor measures the angular speed or angular velocity when you're going into a turn. So, you know, if you're going to a, to a right turn, not only you get lateral movement to the left side, but you're also getting angular movement as you're making that right turn. So on this course, the yaw rate sensor won't show any different readings as you rock it back and forth. So basically we're gonna have to go for a test drive with our scanner and make right and left turns and see whether our numbers change accordingly. All right, by the way, you guys wanted to see the avocado trees. Here they are, growing pretty good. So once again, we go to graphs. This time we get our yaw rate sensor on this graph. Here it is. As you can see, we're at negative 0.17 or negative 0.35. Again, close to zero, but not quite there. We're gonna call it good as far as we can tell. All right, now I gotta make the right turn. There's gonna be beeping, really annoying beeping, but it won't be for long. And you guys gonna keep an eye on this graph. There we go. Making a right turn right now. And as you can see, our numbers do change. All right, now we're gonna try the other side. We're gonna make a left turn into this area and the numbers should swing the other way. Hopefully, again, it won't be, it's gonna be less bumpy, so we'll see, here we go. All right, so as you guys hopefully saw, our sensor seems to be working correctly. It goes negative as you turn one way and positive as you turn the other way, and on the graph, it doesn't seem to be a spike or a drop off as you're doing these turns one way or the other. But now let's say you want to diagnose problems with these sensors and you don't have a scanner that can read live data, but you do have a multimeter. And if that's the case, you can still use a multimeter to diagnose problems with these sensors, but it's not going to be as easy, obviously, or as 100% as if you had a scanner with live data with a graphing option. Because obviously these don't have a graphing option, and you know, so you can't see the spikes and drop-offs on the graph if you have a problem with one of these sensors. But still, if this is what all you have, then this is all you have. Now, besides these, you'll also need to have access to the wiring diagram and a basic knowledge of how the electrical circuit for these sensors work. So that's what we're gonna go over next. All right, so here's a look at the wiring diagram for these sensors on this car. Here's, we got the lateral acceleration sensor, the yaw rate sensor. Now these two sensors on this car work nearly identical to one another, I think. So we're just gonna concentrate on one and it's gonna be the lateral acceleration sensor. As you can see, these are three wire sensors. You get a reference voltage on one wire, then you get ground, and then you have the signal wire. Now, this is not mentioned on this diagram which one is which, but we can obviously see that this pink wire in the middle is gonna be our signal wire that sends a varying signal from the sensor back to our ESP or electronic stability program or control module. The other two, one of them is gonna be reference voltage, probably this white one, and then the other one, the gray one is gonna be our ground. Now, now, if you have a scanner with live data and you saw that your sensor is not putting out voltage, you need to go to the sensor and go to the connector and there check for a power or a reference voltage, ground, and make sure the signal wire also can send signal back to your uh, ESP or control module. And then you go to change, on, change out the sensor. Now, if you don't have a scanner with live data and you just have a code, code reader and you have a code for one of these, you can simply start off by gaining access to either this connector or the pins on the control module, whatever is easier. As you can see, if I were to highlight this, on the control module, we got pins number 22, 23, and 24 that go to this sensor, and these are on connector number one. So on this car, like on most cars, the lateral and the yaw rate sensor are gonna be towards the center line of the car, usually underneath the center console. 
Now it's not super hard to get to them on this car, but it's even easier to gain access to our electronic stability control module, which is this guy right here. There was a cover that was covering this and the, this fuse box. There was just five screws that was holding in. We already removed that in the previous video. And here's a look at our connectors. And this is gonna be connector number one, the 28 pin connector and pins number 22 to 24 are gonna be these three right here. Here's gray, pink, and white. So we grab our multimeter, turn it on, and put our uh, dial at 20 volts DC voltage. And then we'll grab our back probing kit. We'll connect one to a good chassis grant or the negative side of the battery. And then with the other one, we're gonna probe the gray and white wire and make sure we have reference voltage at one of those. All right, so first the gray wire, since it's easier to get to, we got no voltage there than the white wire. If we can just get this in there. There, we got 4.94 volts. That's our reference voltage, pretty much five volts as we expected. Now, if we're just gonna check the, the gray wire should obviously be our ground wire. We don't need to check for ground if we get voltage on our pink wire, which should be our signal wire. And if I can get this back probe in there. There, so we got on the pink wire now, we got 2.4 volts, so yeah, everything again, as expected, seems to be working correctly. But now, in order to test and make sure our sensor is working correctly, we're gonna rock the car back and forth again, and this voltage should go up and down. All right, here we go. Voltage should be moving up and down right now on the multimeter. All right, so as you just saw, we have varying voltage. Not as much as I thought we would have, but nonetheless, we went from 2.2 something, I think, to 2.5 something as we rocked the car back and forth. I thought it would be a wider range. But anyway, we saw that our sensor can put out varying voltage. And now one thing this multimeter obviously can't do is to make sure that your control module can receive that signal that's coming from your sensor and interpret it and you know, put it to use. Now one way to check this, if you have a scanner with live data is again, go to the screen with the graph for the lateral acceleration sensor. All right, so here's a look at our screen. We're at negative 6.47 right now for the lateral acceleration sensor. And that's because we've confused this sensor right now because this was on level ground and I rocked this car back and forth a few times for this demonstration. And it simply needs to be driven around and then it will be back to the normal reading. So next we'll grab our LED test light. It has to be LED just to be on the safe side because you're dealing with the signal wire going to your computer. You don't wanna run too much current through that if there's a ground at the computer or somewhere else and damage your computer. So next, with the probe still in there on the signal wire, you ground out the signal wire and watch the reading on the screen. So there, we're grounding it right now and we dropped down, or we, I guess we went up to positive 3.28. We're gonna take the ground away and it should, well now we just shot back down to negative 5.79 or 5.71. So what that tells us is that the computer can read the signal and interpret it and you know you make use of it. All right, now I should mention that for demonstration purposes, we did this test at the control module, but if you have a lateral acceleration sensor that's not putting out a signal and you know you got power or you know uh, reference voltage and ground, you need to also check and make sure that signal wire at the sensor can send supply, you know, the, the signal to the control module. So you, you, get to, you have to get to your sensor, remove the connector, and then the signal wire, you ground it out, and then check the reading on your scanner. If you have a reading, then everything is fine. It's the sensor that's bad. If you don't have a reading, you need to come back up here and do this test at the control module. And if you have a reading then on your scanner, that means there's an open in that signal wire. And if you don't have a reading, that could potentially mean that you have a problem with your control module, or maybe the pin or the connector that's at the control module, maybe there's corrosion there and it's not allowing for that signal to get to the control module. So yeah, make sure you do all these tests so you don't have to buy one of these sensors. If you have to buy one of these on these cars, they're pretty pricey. Uh, I think, you know, if you're lucky on eBay, you can get them used for 50 bucks, 75 bucks, but then, you know, you're not 100% sure. A lot of times those are not good sensors and you have to do this all over again. So yeah, if you, you know, learn how to test them, then you don't have to start throwing parts at your car, and at the same time, you get to the root of the problem a lot faster. Now, before we wrap this video up, for those of you that are subscribers to the channel, as you can probably picked up in this video, the garage looks a little bit different, and that's because for the last few weeks, I've been busy drywalling this place and painting it, because I got sick and tired of it, the inside of it, at least looking like the inside of a spaceship 
with that aluminum uh, insulation that we had all over the place. So yeah, fun times was had. There was a lot of, there were 72 pieces of drywall that went into putting this together. Lots of uh, joint compound, lots of sanding. I had an electrical sander from Harbor Freight. That thing helped a lot. And then, you know, primer, two coats of paint, and all of that. And I think this, uh, this color combination came out pretty good for this garage. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. So yeah, that's why we haven't had a video in the last three or four weeks. I've been busy having fun putting this place together, but it's all done now. We should be back to our normal schedule. But also before you go, let me know if you'd be interested in buying avocados from Ratchets and Wrenches. I'm in the process of putting a website together to sell avocados. Uh, I might even make some videos about the farm, the grove, the farm work, how to grow the avocados, all the different varieties of avocados, all that good stuff. So yeah, or I might even make a YouTube channel just for the farm work and the growing avocados. So yeah, let me know if you'd be interested. So I'll make sure I'll uh, mention it when it's all up and running on this channel as well. All right, thanks for watching. In the meantime, you can watch these videos on this side of the screen, videos in the suggestion box or in the links in the description box as well. And give this video a thumbs up, hit the bell notification, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.